got Frank all hooked up. I'm gonna get this all pulled out so that I can get that tailgate open. All right, so we just got back from SEMA. It's been a crazy week, but it's time to get back to reality. So while I was gone, as you guys saw, guys were working on a frame swap. Didn't quite get it finished up, so today, They've got to get all of this into that frame and get this frame and that cab off of my lift because I need that lift. I'm going to be working on a collision job, so I'm going to be showing you guys what I'm doing while they're doing this. You'll be coming along with me. We got Steve behind the camera. Hillbilly and Colton are going to be, they're going to be exercising their talents today on this job from last week. Okay, where we ended off last week, we've got the front end all bolted up into place. Now I got to get the motor off. We already got it all hooked up. Just got to hook the cherry picker up, lift it off, set it aside so I can get that pan ham bar. Bracket, extension, whatever you want to call it, cut so I can get it moved over, put on the new frame, bolt it up, weld it on, and then we can put the motor in place. Try it. They're going up. Just getting the inner drive line popped out. Gonna put a baggie over the end so we don't get fluid everywhere. That one. There you go. Okay, we're gonna cheat. We're gonna pick up the frame a little bit, drop this jack stand down. Hillbilly goes to Vegas and he thinks he just got all this man power. manpower. You wanna lift it then? No. That's being rude. There we go. I guess he does have the manpower to do it. I don't. I got, I'm gonna pop these uh, bump stops off because they're like 10 feet longer than the, the other ones. Oh. Bomb just happened. Did it come loose or did it I just not? Oh, yes it did. Got it. Whew. Okay, so while I work on getting this bracket cut, we're gonna have Colton start to pull the rear axle out. Okay, so I'm working on getting this fuel tank removed. So we gotta start with undoing the wires. There we go. Okay, I have to drill the hole out a little bit bigger so the bolt will go in. Just like that. All we needed was just that top lip to be drilled out a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna bolt it in place to where I can get that welded. I think he needs some help over there. He's whining. So I called for hillbillies, come help me out. Gonna have him let down this jack. See how it goes. Fast or slow? Slow, please. Hold up, hold up. Ah! Hillbilly was no help. He's out. Thanks, hillbilly. Yeah, now I'm going back to doing what I was doing. Okay, now that I got the fuel tank dropped, I'm going to work on undoing these wires from the rear axle, rear diff, and then work on getting this rear end dropped out of it so we can just take it over and put in the next, uh, the other one. Okay, I already got the front and bottom side welded. Now I just gotta get the back, this back side welded, and then that mount will be in place where it needs to be, and we can hook up the pan bar. Just keep trucking along. The one thing I hate the most is trying to undo old, dried up, they feel like they're rusted, but they're plastic, so they can't. Clubs. Voila. Now we'll take this, get it all, it's all unclipped and everything, we'll feed it through the holes it needs to go through and take it over to the other frame. Getting the old transmission mount pulled off the uh, transmission because it was broke and putting the one on the other, the one that came with the new frame, that motor and transmission, the transmission mount is good. So I'm taking it off that one to put on this one. So we have a good transmission mount. I make a plan and then I go and change it. I'm gonna take this rear bumper off, get it over there. All right, so while the guys are inside working on the frame swap, I get to work on some collision work. So today, I introduce you to a brand new Chevrolet High Country. Now this truck was parked and it got hit. I don't know if it was a drunk driver, but it was somebody under the influence. Not sure the whole situation, but this thing was parked. They plowed into the back of it. Pretty sure we have a bent frame. We got a bent axle. We got a damaged bedside. We got a rear bumper that was smashed up in. We got a tailgate that won't open. Look at that. Beep, beep, beep. Won't let it come down. This is an insurance job. It may or may not be insured by Allsnake. 
More about that later because that insurance company sucks. So I've got to do a 100% teardown on this so that I can do what's called a virtual assist. Now this insurance company is so crappy they don't send adjusters. All they do is they have a call center that you have an app, you dial into this terrible insurance company and they just cut your bid to pieces. So as of right now, we have an $18,000 bid. The insurance has an initial estimate of 7,000. So there's $11,000 difference. So it's my job to disassemble this, figure out the differences and go back to that insurance company and make them pay for it. Now I don't mean like make them pay for it like we don't deserve it or it's not gonna cost that. These are legitimate charges that they need to pay for. They're just trying to say that there's no damage. So it's their job to try to do it for as cheap as possible. And it's our job to repair it correctly. We wanna make sure that this vehicle, when it is repaired and it is going down the road, it is back to crash worthiness. Now, what that means is if this thing gets in a wreck again, it's gonna act the exact same way it did the first time it was crashed. And it's gonna redirect energy and it's gonna make sure that the occupant of the vehicle is safe. Now this is a rear end hit, so it's not, there's not a lot of indirect damage, but I'm gonna show you a little bit about indirect damage. So we got this nice little gap right here where the bed is, but look at that, boom, dense. Now that is called indirect damage. Because it was hitting the rear, the bed flexed, energy distributed, and it smashed the back of the cab corner. We're gonna have some opportunities to be able to fix that, show you guys some more key pulling. We'll get our dent fix equipment, we'll pull it, we'll fix it, we'll do all that stuff. First things first, as you saw, I couldn't get that tailgate open. So I'm gonna have to go get old King Fred. We're gonna have to use the tow truck to pull that bumper out so I can get the tailgate down. I need to disassemble the tailgate, pull this bed, and you guys are gonna be here with me. All right, so one other thing that I noticed, now this is a brand new truck. So there's a lot of things on like really old trucks that you know, if there's a dent, up front, I probably would never include it. But right here, this has hit something in front of it. So we're gonna be needing to fix that fender. Another thing is for some reason, this door is not lining up. We're gonna have a little bit of an issue there. We're gonna go through, we're just gonna tear it apart. All right, so we're gonna go grab King Fred. I'm gonna back that thing in and I'm gonna use the rear winch to pull that bumper out. So we're gonna come off the pulley. We'll have this down on the ground and we'll snatch block out. So King Fred isn't just for towing. We've used this bad girl with lots of stuff. And we're gonna use it to pull a bumper out. So it's just like a frame rack. And now I can take my chain, I'll chain this up. We'll put it on the ground, show you guys. It'll work out great. Okay, I was working on the EVAB caster, but I have to drill a hole for the line to go through the frame. So I'm just going to hold off on that for a minute. I wanna get the motor put into place. Whoa, why do you do that? I got it in place. It's that bolt that's holding you up. All right, so on these newer fuel pockets, I've got to work, it's all plastic and it's clips. So I have to change this bedside so I'm not super concerned about hurting it, but I do have to get my tool up under the sill and work it out. It's got four clips that have to be depressed. Kind of a weird, a weird design. Once you can get under it, you can get it moved out. There we go. So I'm using these other, these are my bars and stuff to kind of keep outward pressure. Got it. Now, just gotta work the rubber out and it'll come off. Just like such. I didn't even break it. Okay, so I've got the bed all unbolted. Bed's ready to come off, but can't pull the bed without the tailgate being pulled off. So we're gonna hook up the snatch block that Steve went and got, and we're gonna pull the bumper up. So we're gonna work on that now. Got Frank all hooked up. We're gonna get this all pulled out so that I can get that tailgate open. Should be pretty easy. We're gonna do a little bit of pulling, then I'll reposition the hook. All I'm trying to do is get the sheet metal out of the way so that this tailgate will open. All right, so now we've got a free hook. This should work. I'm gonna pull it down and out of the way. Now that I've got it out of the way, I just wanna make sure my tailgate's gonna open. Woo! All right, so what I can do now is I can get the tailgate unbolted, get the wiring unhooked, we'll pull this tailgate off and it's time to lift the bed. So we'll get Fred out of the way and we'll get our bed left in here and take it off. We got a little bit of an issue, got ahead of ourselves. 
So we have to pull the motor back out because we can't put the exhaust in, the motor in, and we can't get the exhaust out of the old, of the old frame without pulling the rear axle out. So the motor's gonna sit right where it's at for now. I'm not gonna unhook it or nothing. And I'm not, I don't wanna pick it up and just leave it dangling in the air until we get to that point. So we're just gonna sit right where it's at, get that rear axle pulled out, then get the exhaust pulled out, then we'll pick up the motor. 10 pick steps four or two steps forward, 10 steps back is what it seems like it's been. So let's get working on this rear axle. First bolt out. Second bolt out. And this is how we're gonna lift it up and hold it up. I guess I should have went back there and picked it up because you're not very tall. I can lift it above my head. Good enough. You clearing? You clearing? Who's that? She clearing. Right. Okay, we got the rear axle all unbolted. It's already pulled out where it's ready to come over and get put underneath the new frame and get bolted up. But first, we got to put an exhaust in before we get ahead of ourselves again. So I'll hurry and get this lift it up well colin's going to hurry and loosen the bolts then we're going to lift it up get the uh, exhaust put into place hung on the hangers and then lower the motor back down <sighs> i'm just getting everything kind of unbolted on this tailgate but these new tailgates they have an electric motor in them that actually actuates them and brings them up and down these aren't just clip on they're bolt on so i've got those undone i've got the bolt out i'm gonna undo the wiring and then i'll be able to pull this tailgate off and put it over on a stand then I'll get my lift king in here. We'll take this bed off and we'll really be able to see the damage. So I've got the wire all fed through. Grab Colton. You gotta take the tailgate out a little bit to get the wiring. It's this big humongous plug. You just gotta get it in the right angle and it'll come out. It's got a spring in it, so gotta find the right spot. So we got a little bit of damage on this tailgate, which is the reason we were taking it off because it was hitting the bedside. We're gonna hurry and set up the bed lift, pull this bed, set it on a cart. All right, so my next step is gonna be, I'm gonna pull the tail lights off and I'm gonna cut this side off, but I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna cut it off like normal. I'm gonna take my air saw and just bzzz, and buzz the side off so I can see if there's any internal damage. I can see right now this back seal plate is all bent. This panel's bent. The next step is to access the inside so I can actually see damage so that I can show that to the insurance company. So I'm gonna get working on that. But over here, you can see this leaf spring is super out of place. It's bent and kicked in. This side is nice and straight and square. We've got some bent leaf, a bent leaf here. We've got bent U-bolts over there. I've got a bent axle housing. Got a lot of stuff to show the insurance company so we can get this all replaced. So I've got to do some more dissecting. Okay, I had to drill a hole to mount the new, or one of the exhaust brackets because it was missing one that I needed. So I can get the exhaust put it into place like it's supposed to be and then put the motor back down. So we were going to wheel the rear axle out this door and around and back in. We're just gonna go jack it and move it that way, right underneath. Putting the first bushing on, let's so hold it in place. Okay, now we're ready to lower this back down again. Is that it? That one's in. That one's in. Beautiful. Last but not least, rear axle. Got the chain situated and attached to the frame. Lift it, so I can, that way I can lift it up to make sure it's gonna be high enough to clear the leaf springs. Well, we're tightening down the first molding now. Time for the rear axle to go in place. Okay, got the rear bolts on the leaf spring started, so now I'm gonna lower it down to get the front one started. Rear axle's in and all tightened up. Get the gas tank put in and then I'll start working on the e-brake cable. Got the fuel tank up in place. Shabam! Going to be putting this front drive line in. I'm tightening up the bracket for the emergency brake. So while Colin's doing the front drive line, I figured I'll do the rear drive line. And then all we have to do is put the re uh, receiver back up in place. I didn't even have to do anything. Job well done, boys. Look at this. This guy's gonna have a perfect, what is this? It's gonna be a perfect 2001 Dodge that is not worth the money that he's paying to have the frame put in. Moment of truth, boys. I'll do my part. Watch this.
Hold it. Make sure everything's lining up where it's supposed to be. Ready? Yep. Colton, you ready? Oh yeah. Steve, you ready? I'm ready. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll reposition the lift and we'll lift the entire truck up. We'll get all the cab mounts in and we're just gonna get this thing all buttoned up. As you can see in this next stall, I'm gonna bring my bed in here so I can cut the side off inside. Well, go through, put these frame mounts back on. Cab mount, sorry. Got them in, just gotta tighten them up. Last one right here. Okay, it's all bolted down. See what we can do to help Hillbilly. Just taking up the computer, getting the computer bolted in place. So it's out of my way and it quits plopping around. We don't need floppy floppy. Went ahead and got this all moved into the bay. Swept it all up, got it cleaned. I'm gonna pull this tail light out and then I'm gonna start cutting this bedside off. And when I say cut off, I'm literally just gonna cut it off. I'll show you that here in a second. But I know that I'm gonna have to move the tail lights on both sides because over here we had an indirect, some indirect damage from the bumper. You can see it hit there and it also scratched and ripped the paint off of the bedside. So this entire bed, this entire bed's gonna get disassembled for paint. Hurry to get these tail lights out. Gotta, this one's wedged in. So I'm gonna try to not break it, but it might, it might break. So I'm just going around and disassembling all of the little pieces and parts and trim that connected this bedside so we can actually expose the dam. So I can't get that splash shield out. I'm gonna have to cut it. I can't get this mud flap off because it's all bent up. But the step, I was able to get all the trim off of it. This trim is damaged. It's broken, it's bent. We're gonna have to replace that. This step has got some distortion to it. So that's gonna need replaced. And this lower piece has some damage to it right there. So that's gonna need replaced. So basically every single little piece so far getting replaced. Bolts were okay. Just putting some zip tie clips in so that I can clip the wiring harness back to where it's supposed to be. And the zip tie clips is just a zip tie with the clip. Holds wires where they're supposed to be. Got two more left. What's up? I'm just trying to hook up the shifter, all the shifter brackets, and it's kicking my butt. Okay, got all the zip tie clips put in place. In front of this, pretty much all put back together. That's where we got it, and that's all the customer wanted. All right, so the guys are kicking butt on that Dodge truck. I'm gonna belt grind my front squat welds, and then we're gonna cut this across and hopefully get this entire side taken off. I'm not gonna do the top. I just wanna rip the side off, but it's gonna be just as easy to hurry and belt grind these than it is to cut the outside skin. Just like that, we got them all cut. Hey, Willie, I did exactly what I told you never to do. What's up? Scratch the panel. All right, so these are slot welded and they're glued. So to get the glue to separate, use a little torch and you heat it up and it'll pop when it's ready. We've got a couple more spot welds up under here and then the lower portion of this bedside. Oh, I'm gonna cut it here. So basically all I'm gonna leave is the top rail tonight. Now there's a sweet spot when you're grinding these. You don't wanna go too far. <laughs> But you gotta make sure you go in. When you do it long enough, you can actually see a ring form when you know that it's cut through. Whoa. All right. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna shear this. I don't want to go up too high, so I'm just going to die grind that part. <laughs> Voila! All right, now we can actually see the extent of the damage. So we got a whole entire wheel well that's damaged. That needs replaced as well. So what I'll do tomorrow, because it's late, we're all tired. I'll keep working on this while the guys are finishing up the Dodge. We'll get the Dodge wrapped up and I'll get this all torn down. So it is tomorrow. Hello guys, good morning. It's the next day. I'm gonna start with getting this course port installed. You don't wanna tighten these because you gotta move them side to side to line up all these bolts. Gotta bolt this to the fender. 
So I'm just gonna put these in, finger tight. There's the first one, and here's the second one. Now all I got to all the bolts that sit right here to do on the fenders. All right, it is a new day in the neighborhood. Getting all geared up. I'm gonna finish getting this bed all torn apart. I am gonna tear down the other side because we got damage over there. So I'm gonna do the bed tear down, show you guys that, and then I'm gonna pull the truck in, but got a lot to do. Yesterday, yesterday was a Monday. You could say it was a typical, typical Monday. Here we are on Tuesday, second Monday of the week. We'll get things going. Got a new fender, new-ish fender. Go on this passenger side. So I'm working on my second, my second upper molding. I already got the side off that I was worried about breaking and I didn't even break it. Now I'm working on the side that I don't want to break, but I could break. I'm going to show you guys how to remove upper molding on a Chevrolet bedside. Because this side I learned on, this side, now that I'm a professional, I can show you how to do it properly. It's got pr upward pressure so that the clips want to release. Anyway, see that? Boom. And then, you got that side. Watch this, just slide of the hands. See that? It's like magic. Then, reposition. Pop this side. Boom, 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 boom. Get it up. For pressure. Slide of the hands. Pop it. Boom. So on. And so forth. Until you successfully remove this without damaging it. Bada bang! Not even a broken clip. Expertly removed. Normally, us body technicians, we just get real rowdy and we grab these and we just yank them off. But not, not this time. I opted out of the braking routine and I took an extra 30 seconds and I removed it correctly. Now that those are both off and they're both not broke, we can move along. So we're just in the process of getting this front end put back together, fenders. We're not doing the cooling system. We're just doing the body work, the body part of it, getting it all put back together. Got my fender on, tightened up. He's just finishing up his. Four more bolts. And then we can put a hood on. We're putting the white one on. Yep, it's gonna be a Dalmatian. So this edge is all taken off. I'm gonna get up inside the bed now and just go across the top. We'll get this upper rail removed and then everything's removed for the bedside skin, enough to show the insurance on that side. We'll finish the RNIs over here. The RNIs are remove. They're parts that you remove and then reinstall after paint. So we'll get working on that. Still just doing a lot of stuff. You guys are seeing a lot of things, but we're working hard. Not hardly working. All right, so I've got everything, but all my spot will well ground. But on all these brand new Chevy bedside, the whole upper rail is blue. So that is why I did it the way I did it. See that? We're just waiting for the pop. You can see it's glued all the way here. It had three pieces of glue there. I separated all those. So we're gonna do this all the way across. We're gonna get this glue all separated. What's on your hand? Measurements they had to go get from earlier. So I'm just getting these all installed. The tie, up the tie bar and radiator, uh, AC condenser, transmission cooler, all the fun stuff. Ta-da! That right there is why I like to cut the entire side off. I got it, don't worry. I'm gonna start by, I've got this wheel flare trim. I've got the inner splash shell. I've got some mud flaps. What I wanna do is I wanna show you guys all the tools that it took to work on this bed. Not that I expect everybody to have the right tools, but I'll just show you what basic tools and specific tools we used to do what I just did. Now, I can't access any of the clips. So there's a high likely chance I'm gonna break this molding because they don't give you access points, which sucks. But before I break that, I'll take this one off. This one's less scary. Hard to not break these clips. Well, I didn't break one, two, I didn't break three. So at $8 a clip, let's see, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That just costs eight dollars. How exciting. The molding is reusable though. 80 bucks in clips versus a $300 molding. I'll take it. I put one little baby scratch in the paint. We're gonna be painting this, so we'll be able to fix that. I'm gonna put a little piece of tape so that I remember, because I know me, and I know how my brain works. Got it. All right, so this is all the tools that I used to pull this bed, to disassemble the bed, to cut the bedside off. So if you have this array of tools, guess what? You can go cut off a bedside off of a brand new Chevy Silverado High Country. It's got the Harbor Freight Chief Long Reach Cutoff. I got a burn thematic torch, a snap-on hammer, got me some Tillman gloves, some Matco safety glasses. I've got a seam buster, a Milwaukee quarter inch impact. I've got a Mueller Coops clip tool, snap-on pry bar, Milwaukee shear, Weira bit set, Milwaukee light, equalizer clip tool, Milwaukee set of half inch impact sockets, Milwaukee pack out socket set. I've got my new Milwaukee impact, half inch. I got my new Milwaukee 3 8 impact and I've got a 3M belt grinder. So with those tools, you yourself can be a collision technician and disassemble a bed. Now that we're all done with that, I'm gonna load all the stuff back up in here and I'm going to pull this outside and pull the truck inside. I've got the truck pulled inside. It is lunchtime though. So that kind of tells you how much time things take. When I get back from lunch, I'll pull the bumper off and then we're gonna start working on this cab. Now the cab, I've got to take apart this upper panel because it goes over top of the cab corner. Now you have to pull the headliner in order to get this out. We do have to pull the back window. I'm gonna to talk to my glass guy and probably have him come pull it. We're gonna tear down the back door, pull the back seat, pull the headliner. We've got a lot of stuff interior wise to pull out of this thing in order to get it ready. Side steps gotta come off. We might be able just to retract it for when we paint it. So we can retract it, unplug it, and then the step will stay down. So we'll figure that out. We've gotta have the windshield pulled, that upper molding. Uh, this fender, we are gonna talk with the insurance. Uh, but we're most likely going to take the bumper off, the grill out, the headlight, all that stuff so we can get that repaired. There's a lot of stuff we got to do. I'm going to send these guys to lunch, but by the end of the day, I should have this ready for the insurance. We're going to have this Dodge all done so we can get that thing out of here because my 2024 Denali is coming in next and we're putting wheels and tires, the lift kit, we're putting the new shocks on it. We're doing a lot of stuff. We are starting our Onyx upgrades to get that thing awesome. So let's go to lunch. One of the final parts is front end, or the front of the truck, which is the hood. Got the coolant system all installed. Got the AC condenser installed. Now to see if our gaps are all correct on the hood. Why is it so stiff? I mean, this fender looks like it needs to be pulled out a lot. It but does. It, might, it looks pretty good for what it is. Hood on a black truck. This entire hitch, look at how damaged it is. So that'll get replaced. I'm not gonna take the rear axle out. I know that the axle housing is bent. We've got some damage down on the tube. This spring mount perch is smashed on the bottom. So I've got to figure all that out. But I'm gonna move on to, so I'm gonna move on to the cab while Hillbilly is getting the bed on the Dodge. It just about got that truck all wrapped up. Okay, we got the bed in the air. I'm gonna push it forward and get it put on the truck. Now going down to set it in place. So these door panels literally just have Christmas trees that hold them in. It's kind of crazy how simple they actually are. But you got to be careful because you can break it in a real big hurry. If you get in a hurry, you can break it. I'm going to take this upper surround off, the belt molding, the glass, get this door all the way torn down so it's ready for paint. I crawled underneath. Now I got all the bed bolts in. I'm just going to go through and tighten it up. Then the bed's good to go. Just took up the wiring for the license plate lights and the tail lights. I've got the window out. I've got the outer door handle. I've got this inner door handle piece loose because when we go to paint this thing, I want it to where we can put a piece of tape right behind this handle opening so we get a good mask line. All I've got to do now, take this, this, and this off, and this door is taken apart. So that's as far as we're gonna go on the door. We're zipping right along. Okay, now I'm in the process of evacuating the uh, coolant system, getting all the air out of it. We can fill it full of coolant. That is, besides that, all we have left is the tailgate. You guys, what is Steve doing? Holding the hose down. 
He's lubricating his arm. You do realize that like you can just hold the hose and like. No, it keeps trying to roll back up this way. I would never stick my arm in a bat of cooling. <laughs> There's a sink with soap out there. Well, it's holding the vacuum so we don't have no leaks. That's a good thing. Time to release the coolant. Okay, now I just gotta top off the radiator with the coolant and then we have to bleed brakes. Forgot about brakes. That's a big must. Who needs brakes? All right, so now we're moving on to the back seat. Now this back seat is way more complicated than it needs to be. So you gotta go along and take out four 10 millimeter bolts that are all the way in the back. So once I get those out, then I gotta pull the headrest, slides, and then there's a secret trap door lever that you gotta take out in order to pull the rear portion of the back seat. I'm thinking that if I can get that back seat out with the back cushion, I may not have to take the base out. So that's what I'm hoping for. So here's a part to this seat removal that if you don't know what you're doing, you could screw it up in a hurry. So we have to actually pop these headrest guides out. And this is a very, very expensive seat. So you've got to be super, super careful because you got to use a lot of leverage. So to get that to pop, that is what holds your seat in. And after you do that, there's a little secret compartment right here. And if you actually pull up on it, your seat releases. See that? Almost forgot the center. We'll do the same thing here and here, and then show you getting this out. All right, and that is how difficult it is to pull a brand new rear seat out. So I've just about got this interior stripped in the back. I'm gonna take this little piece out, and then I can go to the other side Get my center pillar. I've got this center pillar on the passenger side all done. But what I'm trying to do is take off everything so this headliner will drop. So I've got to drop the front of the headliner first and pull it out. Brand new vehicles are so fun. So just for good advice for you guys out there, if you go buy a used truck, make sure you check your air filter and all that because I took the air cap thing off and look what was on underneath it. It's a big old mud moth nest. That goes to the motor. You can kiss this motor goodbye. <laughs> okay, that should be good. We'll put this back on. Moment of truth, let's see if she'll fire. Oh, oh, mark. oh. Knew that was coming. I don't know why I still jump every time you get in the car. Need the jumpers? Possibly. So I'm working on getting the visors undone, taking these pull handles off. Then I've just got to get that center light off and should be ready to pull this headliner. I've got the rear view mirror off. Got that. We'll get the other side off. Okay, now let's see if it has reverse and four gears. Well, it's got that one. Whoa. I think it has all the gears. Got to check engine lights so I can get the scanner, hook it up, and figure out why every time I press the brake, the brake light flashes. Okay, I've almost got this out. Just got to figure out what's holding it at the back, which I'm pretty sure it's just some push-ins, but I want to be very careful. So that's got the master plugs on here. Now our headliner can very, very carefully come down. Chuck is done. Now we can pull it out and let the customer know and he can come and get it. Woo! Let me just show you. I had to strip all of this interior out just so I could get that back window out and this upper air valence thingy majigger, whatever you want to call it. It's got about 15 bolts and nuts and everything that's underneath the headliner. And the only way to access it is pull the headliner. Don't forget the clips that we almost got. You know what? We got it because we're that good. But it only takes all day long to strip the interior. So we've got this truck completely disassembled and ready for the insurance company so that we can get the bid corrected and we can get this thing fixed. As always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.